Hi, I'm Rick McGuire. I'm the executive editor of CardioSource World News. In our March issue, we had a, what I think is probably one of the most uh, enjoyable times I've had as editor of this publication. We had a really nice piece on uh, the statin debate. Fats hit the fire as both sides cite compelling evidence for and against statins for primary prevention. Elsewhere on the website, you can see an interview with Dr. Rita Redberg, one side of this issue. Right now, it is time to look at the other side with Dr. Roger Blumenthal. You and I talked just a few minutes ago that there are some prominent cardiologists who don't believe that there's any evidence in any setting to use a cholesterol-lowering medicine if someone's not had a heart attack or stroke. And, and my response is it's usually too late uh, if you wait till after they've had a fatal heart attack or stroke to think about that. And um, many times people may ha get a heart attack and it's a major heart attack and they develop an ischemic cardiomyopathy. And it's very extreme to say that uh, we should not give a, a medication that has a good side effect profile that's generic alternatives uh, now that we have uh, abundance of clinical trials and the first statin came out on the market in 1987 that was lovastatin uh, people's noses don't fall off their ears don't fall off their hair stays in for the most part um, so I think it's it's um, uh, irresponsible for some people in the medical community to say we shouldn't give statin medication to uh, people who have not had a cardiac event because we're trying to do everything we can to slow this atherosclerotic process. And I think there's plenty of cost-effectiveness analyses out there. If you look at just the statin data, we have the west of Scotland that showed in, in people who had total cholesterol is greater than 250, the addition of provostatin uh, significantly decreased events. Uh, total events went down from about 10% to 6.5%. And it, we almost had a statistically significant decrease in mortality at five years. If you waited an extra five and a half years, you saw a decrease in total mortality. We then had the AFCAPS TEXCAP study that uh, looked at uh, individuals with an average LDL of 150. They had a low HDL cholesterol. Um, Lovastatin decreased events by close to 40%. And it was especially effective if you had a, a low HDL and another risk factor. Then we had the ASCOT LLA study that looked at people with hypertension, an average LDL 130, and atorvastatin uh, decreased uh, events there by about 35%. And then we had the largest primary prevention study called Jupiter, which not only showed decreases in, in revascularizations and uh, in, in heart attacks by 45%, but showed a decrease in total mortality of 20%. So I can't understand how responsible physicians from UCSF really believe that there's no evidence for treating people in, in um, primary prevention. Um, this is a free country, the last I checked, and people can do whatever they want. But if the leadership of the American Heart Association really allows prominent people to say statements that really are baseless, then I, I think we're, not, we're doing a disservice to our patients because there are a number of patients who read what some of these prominent people uh, write, and clinicians read what they write. It adds to the concern that these statin medications are so hard to tolerate that have bad side effects. But there's a, clearly a lot of evidence of cognitive dissonance among these very prominent people, because we have a therapy that can clearly change the natural history of atherosclerosis. The American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology are big believers in this uh, Million Hearts project. Right. What uh, Janet Wright and others are trying to do or uh, give um, uh, clinicians the tools and patients the education to realize that we can make a big dent in cardiovascular disease. But when you actually go around saying that there's no benefit to lipid lowering and primary prevention and you're not really sure about secondary prevention, that really goes against everything that the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, have tried to focus in on over the last couple of decades. Thank you, Dr. Blumenthal. It's always great fun to talk to you. Thank you, Rick.